Hi, I'm Daisha Seifer, and this video will demonstrate how to compute an odds ratio using SPSS. This video will use an example from the fourth edition of the Statistics for Nursing Research Workbook. Now, an odds ratio is a commonly used statistic to obtain an indication of association. Both variables are typically binary, which means they only have two possibilities, yes and no, presence or absence, et cetera. Now, there is a special case of the use of an odds ratio within a logistic regression model, where some of the primary output of logistic regression are odds ratio values. Now that's a very special case and we're not talking about that here. I'm just talking about the computation of a single odds ratio where both variables are binary. The odds ratio is named odds ratio because it is literally a ratio. The formula for an odds ratio is the odds of an outcome in the numerator and the odds of an outcome in a denominator denominator so that it is literally an odds ratio. Odds ratios are typically reported in medical and nursing research uh, and also epidemiological research where um, the odds ratio compares the odds of an event or an outcome occurring among those who are quote unquote exposed. That can be exposed to a treatment exposed to an intervention or something like that. And then the denominator would be the odds of an outcome among those who were not quote unquote exposed. So the interpretation of an odds ratio is that a 1.0, so an exact one is indicative of no association between the exposure to the treatment or event and the outcome. So it's very much like a, a Pearson R of zero. Remember that in a Pearson correlation, an R value of zero is indicative of no correlation, no association. Well, an odds ratio of 1.0 is the same. It in it is indicative of no association. An odds ratio that is greater than 1.0 means that the exposure to the treatment is associated with a higher odds of that outcome. And an odds ratio that is less than 1.0 means that the exposure to the treatment is associated with a lower odds of the outcome. There is no such thing as a negative odds ratio, so the lowest that value can go is zero, um, but that is a very rare phenomenon. Usually the odds ratio has some decimal dust above an actual value of zero. Now, Using an example from the fourth edition of the Grove and Cipher workbook, we have here a, a set of data displayed in SPSS where we have two study variables from a much larger data set. This was a retrospective multi-site cohort study. It was conducted on 100 patients with inflammatory bowel disease who underwent various types of treatment for prostate cancer. This is a study by Fagans and colleagues from 2020. The treatments were categorized into two categories, treatments involving radiation. So that was including either external or internal radiation. And those are coded here as a one. And then treatments that did not involve radiation, such as chemotherapy and hormonal therapy, those are coded as zeros in this treatment group variable. Persons in the non-radiation group did receive um, hormonal therapy, chemotherapy, both, or some other type of treatment that did not, not involve radiation. So the de dependent variable is IBD flare post-treatment, and those are coded as yes or no, ones or zeros. 
the one is always indicative of the presence of that thing. A zero is always indicative of an absence. So as you can see, both variables in this example are binary or otherwise known as dichotomous. You have treatment group, radiation treatment, yes or no, and IBD flare, presence of IBD flare post-treatment, yes or no. So the null hypothesis is there is no association between radiation treatment and IBD flares among persons with IBD and prostate cancer. So to compute the odds ratio, we'll go to analyze, descriptive statistics, and cross tabs. You'll move over one study variable in the row and one in the column. It doesn't matter which one is which, you'll get the same value either way. Then click on statistics and risk. Click continue and OK. And you get two major tables in the SPSS output. The first one is a contingency table, much like what you would see when you compute a Pearson chi-square. You have the two variables in a table, and inside these cells are numbers of people, totaling to be 100 people. And then the second table in the very first row contains the odds ratio and the 95% confidence interval. Now, the odds ratio for this study was 3.50, indicating that the odds of having experienced an IBD flare among persons receiving radiation treatment for prostate cancer was higher than those who did not receive radiation treatment. Now, we can further note that persons receiving radiation treatment were over three times as likely or 250% more likely to have experienced an IBD flare post-treatment. This value is computed by subtracting 1.0 from the odds ratio. So 3.50 minus 1.0 equals 2.50 and then to bring that, uh, to convert that into a percentage, you just multiply it by 100%. So that's 250%. So the difference between the obtained odds ratio and 1.00 represents the extent of the lesser or the greater likelihood of the event occurring. So the significance of an odds ratio is determined by examining the 95% confidence interval. If the lower and upper limits of that confidence interval contain the value of 1.00, which remember means no association, then the odds ratio is not significant. There is no association. But if the lower and upper limits of the confidence interval do not contain the value 1.00, then the odds ratio is significant. There is a significant association. Let's look at the, the confidence interval for our results. So the lower value, the lower limit of the confidence interval is 1.152. The upper limit is 10.633. So within these limits, um, the value of 1.00 does not exist. It's actually lower or it's lower than the lowest limit, right? So it's outside the interval. Therefore, we can conclude here that there's a significant association. So here's how you might write up your findings using APA 2020 format. An odds ratio was computed to assess the association between radiation treatment and the presence of post-treatment IBD flares among persons with prostate cancer. Persons receiving radiation treatment were over three times as likely to have experienced an IBD flare post-treatment. And then I listed the two, the percentages in the two groups, the um, uh, prevalence of the flares in each group. So 28% in the radiation group versus 10% in the no radiation group, respectively. Then I listed the odds ratio and the 95% confidence interval. Now in APA 2020 format, you put that, uh, those two limits in brackets. 
Now, we should note here that the design of this study was a retrospective cohort study. It was not a randomized controlled trial. And therefore, the ability to make a causal link between the type of treatment received and the study outcomes is limited. With cohort studies, there can be factors that affect reasons why a person belongs in a particular cohort, and those factors can affect study outcomes. In randomized controlled trials, participants are randomly assigned to a treatment group. So that eliminates certain factors for being responsible for cohort membership. So in our example, our results indicate that persons receiving the radiation treatment were significantly more likely to experience an IV flare. That finding could be attributed to the irradiation or could be attributed to the possibility that persons who received the radiation maybe had a more severe level of disease. Um, or in a multitude of many other characteristics or possibilities that would have affected the outcome. So we have to be very careful about attributing causality and making final statements about this particular finding. For more videos and instructional videos and information on how to compute statistics using SPSS, subscribe to my YouTube channel, Statistics for Nursing Research.